Alright, this is another episode of Man Vs. Junk. My camera hasn't been working in a little while, so I figured out what the problem was. It just needed to be charged, but... Anyways, so, basically what we're doing here is we've got a computer, and the hard drive is not responsive. It's saying that it has disk read errors, and it's a Western Digital. It's 160 gigabyte, um, ATA, and it's in this old Windows computer. So what's really weird is, is that if I plug it into my um, external recovery uh, deal that you can plug into hard drives, it reads it perfectly, which, you know, is because it's like this awesome piece of equipment. But um, I have another 160 gigabyte ATA hard drive that's used, and it's a Segate, but it's not as bad as it sounds. It's an older Segate, so it probably isn't completely horrible. But anyways, we're going to be cloning um, from the Western Digital to the Segate. So I'm using what's called CloneZilla. And it clones from one hard drive to another. It's a free Linux distribution. And um, it's made by Free Software Labs National Center for High Performance Computing in Taiwan. Now, I've never seen anything as fast or as simple as CloneZilla. Now, I'm just hit enter because it's, uh, it's going to start up. So... Anyways, I mean, even with these ATA hard drives, this could actually copy in less than 10 minutes. I've seen, I've seen some crazy stuff with CloneZilla. I do not know how it copies from hard drive to hard drive so fast, but it's, it's amazing. It can also create images of hard drives. It can, it can do all kinds of fun things. Um, come on now. It booted up last time, so I'm expecting it to do it this time. I'm just waiting for it um, to come up, and then uh, once it comes up, it'll have like a blue screen. It's probably trying to detect the hard drives at this point, which is what I'm guessing. I don't know. Don't know what it's doing because I black output, which is kind of scary. Scary! So, maybe it's trying to do it like 480 by something, I don't know. Should be doing it by 800 by 600 because that's what it said it was going to do, but... Um, all I know is when I had the other hard drive, just the, the one that's busted, hooked up and started this up, it uh, worked perfectly. And now we're having a lot of fun. Well, in the meantime, while I'm waiting for it to start, maybe I should show you the heap that's hooked up to this. Over here we have the, the Decepticon, but that's not the computer. Up here is the computer, and see, here's the Segate that it's going on to. And up here is the Western Digital Drive. And this is the heap that seems to be working, I don't know. And uh, so, yeah, I don't know why we're still getting a black screen. So I'm going to try to restart Mr. Computer and see what happens. Because this is really interesting. Okay. So I'm going to go over and push on the the reset button. Well, I guess I can push the power button if I can't find the reset button. Okay, this time we're going to change some settings and see if we can get it to start. So, we don't need to do a memory test. The memory's okay. Um, that's not good. Hmm. This is weird. I think I know the problem. I think the problem is, is that the hard drive, one of the hard drives is not being detected, and I think it's the Western Digital. No! Delete, 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 delete. There we go. Okay. So primary master is set as ST, so that must be the the one, but it, the Western Digital is not showing up. So, what we're going to do is shut this thing off and uh, check our jumpers. So now I get to show you about jumpers, because jumpers are fun. Okay, I'm going to shut this off. Normally, it's not a good idea to shut it off when the BIOS is in there, because that can be damaged, but I'm a little frustrated right now. 
Okay, so I'm going to go get my hemostat because they're the best things to use for jumpers. the hemostats which are surgical tools now um, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see switch over to close-up close-up mode on my camera um, this doesn't say oh yeah it does it says right here what the jumper settings are and right now it's on cable select I believe yeah so we want to put it on slave unfortunately it does not have a slave option so it either has a master option a cable select option or a limit and right now it's on cable select and for some reason it's making itself the master and the western digital is not able to become anything so we're going to take a look at the western digital instead and see if we can change it um <laughs> oh, okay. So we take jumper from the Western Digital and put it into slave position and hook it back up. Come on. There we go. Okay, now. Alright, so now we should be able to stack this thing up and make it work. That should be beautiful. Okay, so, going to let it start, and hopefully this time, see i got to adjust my thing again. Okay, there we go. Hopefully this time, it's going to, uh, well I didn't get to see, so, let's go ahead and control delete just so I can see it, because I want to see what drives show up, that would be nice um, hey they're all showing up this is a good thing okay so now we're going to uh, why not I'll go ahead and uh, start it up in 1024 by 768 mode get different graphics mode there we go we have graphics graphics are good we like to be able to see things on the screen. And it's black. And it's clicking. I don't know what it's doing, but uh Oh! Econfig hostname user setup. It's doing something. Hooray! There's something on the screen. That's a good sign. Okay. doing stuff I probably should have sh chose the lower resolution so you guys could see what was going on better but I don't care I'm going to choose English here and I'm going to hit enter and uh, let's see don't touch key map we don't need to it's standard US keyboard so that will work Trying to do something, I said arming something, I guess the nuclear missiles are being armed. So, okay. Start clonezilla. Yes, let's do that. I don't want to go into the shell. Device image or device to device. We want to go device to device if we can. Um, let's, why not choose the expert mode, just for fun. Okay, so we want to go to disk to local disk not like a network disk or anything like that. We're just doing something simple. Okay. So, um this isn't going to work. According to this, the uh our Segate drive is only 80 gigabytes and the Western Digital drive is 160. So, that's definitely not going to work. Um 
Hmm. Well, I wanted to show you how to use Clonezilla, but it doesn't look like I'm going to get to. So what this means is that if I'm going to fix this guy's computer, I'm going to have to back up the data on his hard drive. And then I'm going to have to probably reinstall Windows or whatever operating system he wants on his computer and everything else. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. Anyway. Unless maybe Windows can repair itself, which would be awesome. But I don't think Windows can repair itself on this drive because the computer keeps complaining that it can't read the disk. So, let's have some fun, shall we? Here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to shut Mr. Computer off. Come on, shut up. Off. Okay. Now, we're going to unhook the 80 gigabyte drive. We're going to leave the jumper settings where they're at and pull out phone bill up because we don't need to close the door because it's not going to work. Okay. And so now computer starting. Found to Western Digital. Ah, uh, NTLDR is missing. Hey, what do you know? That's a good sign because that means that the hard drive works. Okay, so what we need now is a Windows XP disk. So I'm going to show you how to fix this with Windows XP. Um, well, I've used my Windows XP disk so many times that they got cracked and broken, so now I use Windows XP Pro disk. So I'm going to stick this in my DVD drive and show you how to use it to fix the NTLR whatever stuff. So, I'm sure I'll have the drive unhooked and I'm going to reboot it. Okay, so now we're booting. Computer. Whoops. Ah! Oh. Stay put. Good camera. Okay. So, going to boot it with my boot. And now it's booting. Setup is inspecting your computer's hardware configuration. Aren't you excited? Okay. So now the computer is being probed by Microsoft to find out what's in there. And it's asking me to run it, uh, hit F2 to run an automated system recovery, but that's not what I want to do. Now, it's really easy to screw this up. People do now see what's funny. This is okay, it's really funny. You can use a Windows XP disk to fix Windows Vista or Windows 7 a lot easier than you can use a Windows Vista disk or a Windows 7 disk to fix Windows 7 or Windows Vista. And I'm going to show you why. Of course, you have to know what to type into the terminal or the command line or whatever you know but anyway so we're going to end up fixing the NTDLR thingy now I think my theory is is that the uh, the jumper settings are wrong in the computer because see um, the BIOS was complaining before the customer said that there was no slave and this was in like a master um, jumper position instead of a slave position and now it's saying that the NTLDR thing is missing and what that is is like the boot thing for Windows so what we're going to do is we're going to fix boot and fix master boot record and fix boot and uh, we're going to do some things and I'm going to show you how to do three things in here whether they're necessary or not um, and uh, that way you guys can fix anything with Windows insanity okay the man's computer needs to be shut down why is it running? And this this needs to be ejected. Okay. 
setup is starting windows it's taking forever I'm going to see if I can put this disc away because it's a very important disc while we're waiting for the windows to start Now what we have is um, three options. Windows has finally started. You can hit uh, enter to enter setup, which you do not want to do unless you're like reinstalling Windows or trying to fix it through the reinstall. Repair. That's what we want to do. So we hit R. Okay. Now you don't hit anything. If you hit anything now, the computer is going to restart and you have to start all over again. So wait. Okay. There it goes. Now it says which one do we want to go into? It's one, so we hit one, enter, and it's going to ask us for a password. At least usually it always does. Yep. So we're gonna hit enter and just ignore. Now if there is a password and you don't know what it is, then you're gonna have to use uh, the system rescue CD to delete the password. Um, okay. So uh, now what we want to do is uh, if we were gonna run a check disk, we would type. Let's see if I can type chkdsk forward slash p forward slash r now I don't remember what all those do or stand for but um, I could tell you if I looked up the help file or help thing on it um, let's see if I can get in here a little closer so you can see exactly what it is that I am doing now if I were to run that it would take quite a while so I'm not going to actually run that what I am going to run is fix boot yes Okay, and fix MBR, yes. Fix boot, yes. Fix MBR, yes. Okay, exit. Now, I need to get the disk out so that it can have a chance to try to boot. NTLDR is missing! No! So it's still screwed up somehow. And I don't know why. Don't know how. Um, NTLDR is not a good thing to be missing. So, what I'm going to do next, I'm not sure. I'm thinking. Do I want to try recovery option? Just not sure. It's going to be a pain in the butt. So, We'll go ahead and just reinstall Windows. Come on, restart. I hit Control Delete. You are supposed to restart. Why did you not restart? Computer doesn't like me. So, we go ahead from here. Find the reset button. We are finding a reset button and it's just not working because Either it's not hooked up or there's something wrong with Mr. Reset button. But the power button seems to function as the reset button and I do not know why. So, we're going to fix windows. No, boot, quick. Okay, there we go. I almost missed it. Got to hit the button. You have to hit the any key. Now, the any key is located somewhere between escape and the lower right hand corner of the keyboard where the enter is. Somewhere in between there is the any key. I'm not sure which one it is, but anyways. So, now Windows is going to do its setup thing again. It's loading kernel debugger DLL and hardware abstraction layer and all this other stuff. But I still cannot figure out why to install Windows, just to bring up the installer, it takes so long. I mean, like with Linux, you just put the disk in and it boots in less than the same amount of time and you can run the entire system from the disk but with Windows it's like it just I don't know it doesn't make sense to me 
Anyway, so we're going to go ahead and let it come up. And this time, instead of hitting R for repair, we're going to go ahead and hit enter. And uh, we're going to try to get it to do a complete um, repair of the system. And uh, if it will do that, it should fix everything. I don't know why this thing is so screwed up, but it's going to fix it. Going to fix Compooper. While we're waiting, I'm going to show you the t-shirt that I put on today. Oh, so I'm starting Windows. That means it'll be done in a few seconds. But anyway, let's see if I can show you my awesome t-shirt here. Okay. See, so use my my t-shirt and it says use the best see and yeah awesome t-shirt still trying to start windows I have more Linux t-shirts that are awesome but anyway still waiting Come on, Microsoft. There it goes. See, I just had to tell it. Okay, so I'm going to hit enter. Windows XP professional setup. Do you agree? Yes, I agree to be slaved and bound by Microsoft. Okay. So now it is searching for previous versions of Microsoft Windows. Uh, to set up Windows XP and the selected to create... I'm going to hit enter. Um, nope. It won't let us do that. I want to fix it. What must I do to fix it? It's not going to let me fix it. Hmm. Isn't this fun? So, all I can do now is back up the data that's on there and uh, reinstall and everything. And so, I'm going to ask the guy how important his data is to him because I do not want to reinstall... Um, the stuff on this system. I mean, you know, back up his stuff on the system and reinstall it and everything. I'd rather just wipe it out and reinstall it. But So I'm going to call him. Alright, normally what I would do is uh, to back up the stuff on the Western Digital Drive here. What I would do is hook it up to, uh, or leave it in the computer, boot up uh, JU Linux and back it up to an external hard drive. But since I'm in my shop and I have all of my external equipment hooked up to plug this into my computer and back it up, I'm going to cheat. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. This is really cool. Um, and this is a gift someone gave me. I think it cost like 25 bucks or something. And I'll show you. I'm going to use it on my computer. So I just unscrew the hard drive here, take it out. And I, I'm guessing I probably should put the jumper back where it was on the hard drive because it worked before on my computer when I hooked it up. So I'm thinking that I probably shouldn't... Uh, shouldn't go against the grain if it's going to work. So, put these screws here. Pull this hard drive out. There it comes. Okay, and uh, I'm going to show you guys changing the jumper back just so that you can see what I'm doing. Let's see, I'm going to zoom in close here. Okay. So I'm going to pull this out with the hemostats and put it on the other position there. You can't really do that with needle nose pliers, it just doesn't work as well. So, um, anyways, I'm going to go over here now to my computer. And now it's time to cheat. So, this is going to be fun because I get to show you my awesome stuff I've got here. Okay, so here is my doohickey. And uh, so what you do is you take the USB doohickey, which is plugged into my computer, and you plug it into the hard drive first. So, there it's plugged in. Now it needs power. And I've got this power thing that plugs in. Like this. And now something's angry at me. Okay, so that's plugged in. And, uh... 
I think I just need to uh, unplug and plug in the USB on the back of my computer to get it to mount. So, plug and plug it back in and it should come up on my desktop. Or maybe not. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there I have on my computer the uh, the hard drive. So we're going to Documents and Settings. Wait a second, did that say FBI? Oh, okay. I thought <laughs> it looked kind of funny. Okay. Um, let's see. View. Show hidden files so I can see everything. Um. I guess this is all of his stuff, so I'm just going to back it up, copy, I'm going to go to my uh, 319 gigabyte file system, that's an external hard drive that's plugged in, and I know I created a, fol a folder for him, there he is, Wally, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just paste all this stuff in here, and so it's going to start copying, so what it's doing is it's copying from one external hard drive to another external hard drive and it's still not sure how many gigabytes it's going to be copying um, or how long it's going to take to copy but it's preparing and it's doing that so I just thought I'd show you that step because it's kind of cool alright so what happened is uh, I took the hard drive out of the computer and the, the customer decided he wanted to trash the old computer and just get a get a uh, used computer for me uh, Dell Optiplex GX240 with 512 megabytes of RAM I believe and uh, let's just take a look uh, yeah it's got 512 megabytes of RAM Windows XP um, service pack 3 so that's all installed and done now let's pull the disk out Windows disk um, put this away but anyways um, so I wiped out his hard drive after I backed his data up to my external hard drive on my personal computer and that took about three or four hours to back up the 160 gigabyte hard drive but I only had to back up about 20 gigabytes so I'm not quite sure why that took so long it's probably because the ATA drive was so old and screwed up and everything I don't know so um, first thing I'm going to do so that I'm not bothered is uh, go to the control panel and switch it to plastic view and go to um, security center and tell it to stop notifying me about things and then I'm going to turn Windows Update off if it's on I told it not to turn on, but you never know. So, turn that off. And uh, I believe that we should be connected to the network. Um, yeah. It uh, sees a, con a connection, but for some reason it's not showing up on the taskbar, so I'll tell it to show up. So next move, let's go ahead and just find out real quick if there's any drivers that uh, are not installed. Now I think this thing has a, has a, uh, interesting, okay, let's see, display, ah, oh, the NVIDIA stuff is awesome, okay, all the drivers are working. So it looks like uh, we might need one driver update, I'm not too worried about that some reason it thinks we're in Yakima, Washington. Don't know why. So I'm going to go to windowsupdate.com through Internet Explorer. And I want to check and uh, see. I want to do the custom installation. I don't want to do, you know, any automatic stuff. I just want to find out if there's any drivers or anything. And we're only looking for an Ethernet driver for the wireless thing other updates could cause problems
custom and choose custom. I'm listening to some Christian music on my cell phone with my uh, headset that I've got because obviously I can't, you know, play music for you guys on the YouTube or I get in trouble. Let's see. Oh, come on now. Going to download.com to get a few things. Let's see if we can get us a uh, Google Chrome. Explorer's mad about something and I don't really care. <laughs> Saving files to the desktop where they should go anyway. Hardware updates, there are three. So let's see here, we got, um, well we don't need to install any display drivers for a monitor because this isn't his monitor. We can install the Netgear wireless, that would be good. And uh, the NVIDIA GeForce driver should help, either that or it'll screw everything up. So now we need to go through and make sure that the other updates are not selected. Alright, so we're just going to install the two um, hardware updates that we need. And we're not going to install anything else. And then we're going to install Google Chrome, which is happening at the same time. So we have a secure way to access the internet. And we're not going to update uh, Internet Explorer or anything like that. Okay, the drivers are installed. So now we're just waiting for Google Chrome to install. Ah, and the wireless networks are... It's working, so that's cool. Wow, there's a lot of networks. 
Jeez, I don't even need to be paying for internet. I could get on the internet without even paying for it. Just need to get my uh, amplifier hooked into a router and tell it to connect to one of these networks and I wouldn't have to pay for internet. So now it's time to get some antivirus. Clam win. I think all these are being saved into a download folder instead of being saved to the desktop because of the way it's set up. Oh, do, 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 go to options. Okay, browse. Desktop. Okay. And right, now we'll see where the files are going when they get downloaded from now on. <coughs> well, it looks like uh, Spybot Search and Destroy is downloaded. So we can start it. And there's a vast. Clam win.
Okay, so Vast is uh, doing a quick scan of the PC. Uh, Clamwin is doing some stuff. He's trying to update. And uh, Spybot is trying to start. So, anyway, it's pretty good for a 32 bit computer, you know. With uh, 512 megabytes of RAM. Ha! Finish installation. So I'm going to delete the setup file for Clamwin. And I'm going to configure it. And it looks like Avast is done installing. Welcome to Avast. Now we need to hit the register now button um, for uh, registering for free. Unfortunately, you can't do that because the customer isn't here and you need their information to input into there. Now, of course, here on Clamwin, I'm setting it up to scan drive C. Uh, weekly. And Spybot's being updated. Avast virus database has been updated. And Avast, of course, always does everything on its own. Um, let's see settings. Need to make sure that the uh, settings for the program are automatically update too. I'm going to go to my documents and look for a downloads folder and uh, erase the stuff out of there. It's going to the recycle bin, so I empty the recycle bin once that gets done. Oh, Spybot's uh, still being used by the setup thing. Going to mode, hitting advanced mode. Um, you nice. Immunizing uh, protects you from potential threats, so we're going to do that. Protected, you want that to be the same as the total on the bottom. While it's doing that, I'm going to go to settings and I'm going to set this thing up. Um, run check on program start. Fix all problems, do not rerun checks, immunize, don't ask for fixing confirmation. Uh, system start. Let's see, run check on program start. Mm.
and we want the automatic updates turned on. Okay, now we're going to schedule it. Edit. Schedule. New. Weekly. It's almost done immunizing. And here we go. So now if we restart the computer, everything should be done. I just need to take all of his stuff and stick it back on his hard drive. Oh.